was going to do a little modification today to a new knife that I got just recently. Um, kind of in the same standard that I've been doing to my other knives. Um, this is my Mora Companion. And uh, I basically have a Coughlin Flint Striker, 5 sixteenths in diameter. Uh, then I take the uh, this black cap off and uh, add my own cap to it or knob, whatever you want to call it. I use a half inch oak dowel to do that. And so see that's kind of what that is right there. I've also modified my bush lure in the same manner. I've got actually some shock cord on here to kind of hold it in there. Now the difference between these two is that this one, when I got done with it and uh, got it mounted on here with some Gorilla Glue, I uh, just started up my pocket rocket and then kind of burned it a little bit, kind of make it look kind of cool. This one I actually uh, put some design on it. Not great. But, you know, it was something. Using my new uh, burner. I will be using that today. But uh, both of these little projects were kind of fun. Um, they didn't really take any effort. This, for instance, has been on here for a while anyway. All I did was change the knob. This has been on here for quite some time too. All I did was change them up. So, um, what I have here, this is my new knife. Uh, this is a uh, Schrade SCHF 13. And you know, it's affordable, and I really like the knife. It's got that, uh, what they are calling stonewashed uh, blade. Uh, this is a pretty decent knife. Um, I can't wait to really go out there and work it. And I'll you know, show that review. This isn't a review on the knife. This is just I'm showing you what I'm going to do with the sheath. Because um, I haven't used it. Just sharpened it over and over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my usual method. This is a dry eraser pin cap. I'm going to cut that end off right there. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it right here. Figure out exactly where here in a little bit. And that's where, of course, my ferro rod's going to go. This one right here. And I'm going to take an oak, the oak dowel. Uh, but what I'm thinking about doing is taking a piece of this dowel and uh, kind of carve it down into a semi point like an antler tip. Okay, and cut it off maybe right about here, and uh, drill a hole in there. And these are five sixteenths, so I'm gonna drill a hole in there big enough to fit this rod, and I put it on there, glue it on with some Gorilla Glue, and then I want to take my burner and put a thicker tip on here, and see if I can carve those lines, striations in there to kind of resemble a uh, deer antler. Uh, yeah, I know I probably could find some if I really wanted to look, but uh, I have this and I have this and let's give I just want to give it a try see how it looks if it doesn't look like a deer antler who cares? I'll have a different kind of cap on the striker. That's all I'm really trying to do so uh, So when I get my Little cap mounted on here, which I'm going to use a piece of tape to hold it wherever I wind up wanting it uh, I'm going to use this paracord to wrap it on there good and tight. This is kind of like an autumn blend of paracord. Uh, I like the way that it looks. It's got a little bit of brightness to it. And but the count has got the camo too. So so anyway that's the project. So uh, let me get some stuff together and we'll start to work.
that's pretty much got it. Doesn't look much like so it. What I wanted, to, but I wanted to do this. I wanted to make a nice little curve right here, and a so inside that. curve. When I mount this on the sheath, that that curve goes out like that. That way, I don't have I don't have a lot of uh, interference when I'm trying to pull the knife out. So far, so good. Let's get the old wood burner warmed up. That does not look like a deer antler, <laughs> but it's okay. I'm going to use it anyway because it's got a nice shape to it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my pocket rocket and give it a good little burn on there to kind of darken the oak up. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to cut it to length, drill a hole, glue in the ferrocerium rod, and then the uh, burning will be the last thing I do with it and then I may just put some linseed oil on there too. Looks kind of like a gnome hat or something, doesn't it? Uh, I'm going to take a little sandpaper, rub this on there, kind of smooth that out, maybe straighten it out a little bit. All right, let's go get a hole in there. So that's almost finished. I got my hole drilled in there. got it nice and straight. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention before is that I'm also going to drill basically a lanyard hole. So uh, I took the knob off of here. Tight. There's your knob for your ferrocerium rod right up there. I've noticed uh, on the other projects that where I've used the Gorilla Glue that, um, and you can read about it, it'll tell you this that uh, it'll start to expand. It's almost like um, like an insulation, like that foam insulation where you squirt in. And uh, it starts to expand in the gap, which is really cool. I like that. But uh, it also will come out of its pores in the wood if you're not careful. So, all right. Get that excess off there. And there you go, it's in there. Uh, really, seriously, within a few minutes, it'll start bubbling out through here, which is fine. I might actually, if it doesn't, I might actually put a little more in there just to kind of seal that in, uh, you know, just to drop. So, 
There you go. So we can do that without gluing it to the tabletop, huh? <laughs> All right, we'll be back to check on it later. That's fine. And then I think what I'll do is I'll uh, get some linseed oil rubbed in there. So it doesn't really look like an antler, does it? But it does look like a wizard hat. <laughs> I think it's a keeper. Alright, see if I can explain this. I'm trying to uh, fit this on here so that it, you know, of course, fits a certain way. I don't really want this little cap, which, you know, is basically the sheath that goes in, uh, to be up too high, which is uh, kind of where I was going to put it a few minutes ago. But when you look at it, see right here where this catches the blade that come when it comes in, where it basically latches onto it. I don't want, I'm going to wrap this on here with paracord and I don't want that paracord going over that sizable bump there. You can kind of see it. I want it to be more of a flat surface to go on. So I've decided to move it down right about there so that it's underneath this little notch right here. And But you can see what it does to the ferro rod, the cap on the ferro rod now all of a sudden is up about a quarter of an inch or so because it's hanging up right here. So I could do one of two things. I could actually cut a little notch out of the sheath right there, or I could cut a groove right in here so that it'll slide right down over it. And I can do that and, uh, and then burn it again to make it look good. And I basically would have a little groove that the sheath would fit into and it would hold it nice and still. I'm also going to just especially if I feel that I need to do this just for safety sake to not lose this is that I'm going to put a layer of tape right here uh, before I tape this on so that it kind of sticks out from the sheath just a touch and that way because of the angles and everything if I left it up flush right there uh, this ferro rod so I can show you a little better. We'll basically lean right up against the sheath like that. And if I did that, um, well, I wouldn't be able to put a uh, any shock cord underneath the bottom here to hold it on. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to go with that. But if I can cut a groove in here and have it slide down into the cap and fit solid right there so that I'm not worried about losing it, I think in the lanyard hole here, what I'm going to do is put that same paracord in there rather than using shock cord. But you know, if that's the case, and I decide to leave it like that with just the paracord in the lanyard hole, if I don't like the security of it, I can pull. I'll still have space down here, so that I can take this out, take the paracord out of the lanyard hole, and put shock cord in there, so I can secure it. So I have options as I'm working here, uh, which is a good thing. So let's uh, do a couple things, and I'll be right back. All right, I think I got it pretty much where I want it. Made a few adjustments, cut a little notch right there that I will uh, darken up so you really can't see it. Um, it's kind of loose in there right now. Okay, but when I put the paracord on there, this is going to tighten down. You can kind of see how the tape's moving right there. 
it's going to tighten down and I got a, like a little wedge in here to keep this out and basically what it'll do is it'll force it to jam up against the side of the sheath. So let's see what we can do here. All right, to get this started, yeah, my hand's going to be in the way and I'm really going to be able to tell what I'm doing, but you want to take a paracord and you're going to make a loop like this, taking this piece and putting it over that short end. And when you start wrapping it around, you're going to wrap around like this. And then this eventually is going to come out and we're going to run it through this loop. And then we're going to take some pliers and grab this and pull it nice and tight. And it's going to tighten that loop down. Then we're going to burn it all in so that it doesn't want to move. So let me adjust this around here. And if I don't like the way that that tape looks on there, I will just cut it off where it's Already exposed. Kind of push this up because I want it right at the edge. Yeah, that's better. I want it at the edge of the cap because I want a lot of pressure on there. So that's basically how or where it's going to be cinching down the cap and the uh, ferro rod. Seems to work. Okay, we're just about where we want it to be. So I'm going to take some scissors and cut this. Okay, so I go. what I do is I go past the loop, as you can see right here. Make sure that's tight. And then I pass it back through the loop this way. Almost like you're making a you knot. Hold that super tight. As long as you got this, this piece tight that you just wrapped through, that's usually pretty good. And then I'll take my pliers and watch down here. Alright, see, nice and tight. Yeah, nice and tight. See? So let's trim this. Let's get a nice little short piece here. We're going to do the same thing here. There. And then we're going to take our little bic. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to tug on that a little bit, kind of hold it down. And it's I'm going to light so this. soft and molten around here that what I'll do is when I get it to that point, then I'm going to just, you know, turn the, and I'll take it bit. and I'll smash it smash that moltenness right into the rest of the paracord and it melts right in and melts together and it holds it still. Okay, see how it's kind of molten. And you take and I just kind of slide it across, and smash it down. Okay, let's do it this side. And what I do is I try to melt the underside that is actually going to be melted into the rest of the paracord. Okay, so that's pretty good. It's actually got a flame on it. Okay. It's pretty much done. All right, there's the finished product. Uh, I've got some linseed oil on there, letting that soak in. Uh, make sure that when you uh, are done and you cut these ends off to where you want them, that you melt those ends so that they don't fray. So here we go. Let's pop that thing in there. hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it doesn't take very long. I mean, I've probably been working on it for about an hour or so. Exception of actually cutting the knob for the end. That took a little bit longer. I'm not really great at carving and doing that kind of thing, but uh, it's so much fun to do. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. hope you enjoyed it. And uh, boy, 
you ever get a chance to do this project, it's definitely worthwhile.